Anthony William, the medical medium, live right here on YouTube. And I have special guests right here, Annika, Benjamin, Peace. Hi. Hi. They're here from Germany. They flew all the way from Germany. Yeah, we did. <laughs> and we're here right now. So this is crazy. We're here in L.A. as we speak. And this is amazing. So we're going to talk about you know, the healing stories that, that Annika has and cover some other things, too. And this is just a great time for us all to be together right here. Um, seriously, you guys took that flight all the way here. And... <laughs> Yeah, we I did once. It. They're <laughs> jet lagged. They're jet lagged. They're jet very, I don't know if you slept at all. Jet lagged and yeah. slept nah, not, not, not really. so much. Wow. It was like a twelve-hour flight, and it was like, Phew. well, it's an honor to have you here. It truly yeah. is. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having us here. Well, your your healing stories are powerful because they can help so many other people out there find their way. And, you know, when you can't find answers and, you know, you're going to doctor to doctor and you feel yeah. that kind of hopelessness take over and you realize that, you know, you're really sick. It's just, it's so important to have a way out or to have information that makes sense. And, you know, that's why, I mean, you guys are warriors, really. <laughs> I mean, you are, you're health warriors. You're, I mean, you're, you're, you're fighting for the people. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're doing. I mean, I know. I've seen your work out there. It's the first time we've ever met. Yeah. And right, <laughs> first time. <laughs> yeah. First time we've ever met, which is really exciting all on its own. Yes. And um, but I've watched your work on social media mm -hmm. and how much you care about people and how invested you are about getting the message out so people can heal and, and find answers they need. I, you guys really care. Yeah, and you that's what big, I've always noticed. I you're mean, a big role model for us because you care for 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 the humanity, and yeah. this wow. is so important for us. And we want to give the light to other people that they can actually heal because healing is is so so it's is possible with the yeah. right kind of information. Yeah, you know, it's about empowerment and healing empowerment. You know, we get disempowered, and I talk about that a lot lately. Is that you know, when we're told our body's attacking itself and we're told that, you know, it's our genes and we're told we're creating it. That's a whole nother thing. Did you ever hear that? Is that just me talking about that all the time? Because I've <laughs> always, I, I've heard that out there where people are like, you know, maybe I'm creating this with, my, you know, with my, my, my sickness yeah. because I'm thinking the wrong yeah. way. Did you go through that too? I yeah, mean, that was exactly what doctors told me. So yeah. when I got to the doctor's office, my first diagnosis was Hashimoto. And Hashimoto's, Hashimoto's yeah. and um, next psoriasis, psoriasis, arthritis and autoimmune gastritis came up wow. and they always told me, OK, Annika, your body is destroying yourself and you have to live with this and probably you will not be um, uh, you will not be able to get an old age. So you have to learn to live with this and your That's mind, devastating. your mind has a problem because yeah. you know you are sick and you're getting sicker because you think that you are sick so it was it was weird um and so yes, it's like i know exactly what you're talking yeah, about so so we get told and that's what happens with women right yeah. now where we think women are empowered mm. but yet they're disempowered in the worst worst way we could ever possibly imagine mm. in our history right now which is their bodies and their health and so we, it's like almost like a joke being played on everybody out there, or it's almost like no one wants to talk about this. And it's spirit of compassion is, is who gave me this information all these years. You guys know, I talk about that. And, and so, and spirit of compassion always said to me, women, women disempowerment is going to be at its all time high where we are now. And that's unimaginable when you think about it, because how is that possible? How can we even think about that being that way? But when we're told our bodies are, and men too, when we're told our bodies are destroying itself, our body's immune systems are attacking glands and organs, and that, you know, and then, and then if that's, if, since they don't have an answer for why you're sick, they don't have an answer, research and science doesn't have an answer, it's not the doctor's fault, doctors are great, but because they don't have the answer, then they, all of a sudden, people try to figure it out, well, maybe it's uh, attraction. Maybe it's how we're thinking. Maybe it's we're manifesting it. That is disastrous because that might be great for other things that aren't your body. Yeah. <clears throat> that might be okay for, like, I want to attract a good relationship. 
I want to manifest a good relationship. Yeah, I want to manifest love. I want to manifest this. I want to manifest a good job, <clears throat> a good career. I want to manifest some. That's great. But when it comes down to health, when it comes down to why we're sick, why we're going through so much, why we feel like we do, why we have all these symptoms, it, and it's disastrous to think that we may be manifest at that. Yeah. And, and that's happening right now. I'm seeing that all the time because research science doesn't have the answers. Everybody's running around sick. And then you get healthier people who haven't been sick yet say to other women, other young women, like, no, you're just, you're not, you're, you're, you're not on your game. Right. <clears throat> you're not, you're not like connecting up there. You're not spiritually mm. connected because, you know, you're not doing what you're supposed to do. And you're not like, and that's disastrous. That's a whole nother form of disempowerment mm. I'm seeing growing rapidly because once again, nobody has the answers to chronic illness. Absolutely. And, and I think we, we need desperately um, empowered women. So yeah. it's so important in our work, not just yeah. on, a, on a physical yeah. level, also on a mental mental level. So Benjamin is, psycho is a psychologist and we are working a lot with some mental part of, uh, of healing. And of recovering people of recovering. every pit because of the wounds from this. Yes. The wounds so from being wounds. told your body's destroying itself. The wounds of being sick alone, that alone, of going through that. Because when you feel hopeless and you're in that place, yeah. you get into a dark place. People get into a dark place. I've been watching that for 35 years. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> maybe even a little uh, longer than that since when I was little. And... You know, it's a dark place you can go into. And so I just know you guys are doing amazing work. That's why I had to have Thank you, you here. Thank you so much. <laughs> so it's so like, kind. you know, I have to get them here. It has to be the, the first episode of this season it has to be you guys. <laughs> well, because thank you so much. You guys are you guys are world changers and 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 that matters to me with the information. So tell me a little bit about your story too and I know yeah. we're going a little bit into it so you're going to different doctors and yes. you're diagnosed with the Hashimoto's you're diagnosed with with psoriasis. the psoriasis. psoriasis so this all started 10 years ago when I was a young college student Benjamin and I were a young couple and we lived a fullified life we were very happy and <laughs> <laughs> absolutely nice <laughs> yeah and um then out of a sudden symptoms started um, I remember the day quite well, went to the bus station and out of a sudden I got very dizzy and got something called brain fog. Today I know mm. it is brain fog because you have a radio show about it and um, you talk in your books about it in, in Level Rescue, for example. Here's all the information in about um, brain fog and this was such a hard symptom for me. Um, to live this because when you have brain fog you can't m move through you, your normal daily life your normal business I um, became also, I also um, got a lot of symptoms neurological symptoms like neurological fatigue um, tingling, tingling yeah. and numbness and neurological and fatigue is <clears throat> the whole thing with that is that that's medical medium information. That's neurological fatigue because doctors never put fatigue with neurological yeah, together before. That never happened. Yeah. And either did research and science. It's either you're fatigued and that's it. You're fatigued. But neurologically fatigued means that there's something going on at the central. That your central nervous system is having trouble, and that's causing your fatigue. And there's so much information I talk about that, but so you have the neurological fatigue going on, right. the tingles. And and when <clears throat> and a tiredness all whole day long. Yes, I and remember that. <laughs> yeah, I was so weak. So you had you had to do the mattress island thing. I call it mattress island where where you know we spend more time in bed than we yeah, want right. to. That's right. And and that's hard that's hard for women because women mm -hmm. and men too, of course, but it's hard for anyone to who wants to move and groove and they want to get things done they want to like work hard they want to survive right. they want and then you start feeling then you start feeling like well I, i'm not productive right and i, I, I had I'm to not, stop my uh, studies so yeah. i had to stop it and other symptoms were tinnitus how old were you uh 23 23 it's uh, 10 years ago yes when, when no, today today i'm 33 <laughs> and 10 years ago i was 23 so okay. when everything started but you're 25 now and this, is, <laughs> this is two years ago so no, I, have no. to get, I have to get this right no no today i'm 33 and 
yeah. all begins 10 years ago and I had a tinnitus and floaters in my eyes and problem with my with my vision so yeah. everything around me was just in a fog like brain fog is and that's um, why why it's called brain fog, yeah it's a good yeah. good <laughs> good thought <laughs> yeah it was it was a hard time but I I'm a lucky one because I have my my husband and he um, he was on my side every every time on this on this journey, and it is a tough it's one. But it's I learned so so much the last ten years, and after seven years of chronic illness and a bunch of symptoms, I found your first book, Medical Medium, and the I think book. is it is better than when Benjamin <laughs> tells true. the story because it's a little bit funny. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a quite, it's a quite um, funny story actually because I came home from work and Annika was sitting on the couch and reading this blue book <laughs> and looking with me, um, it, looking to me with, with tears in her eyes and, and I uh, recognized immediately that, that, that aren't tears of sadness but I couldn't find the onions. <laughs> she must have been cut. So, so I was looking at all the onions where, where, the, where the tears came from, but I couldn't find them. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then I realized, now this, this are just tears of joy. And then she looked at me and said, okay, honey, I finally found the answer. Yeah. And this was, was like, and, and I believed her immediately. And we went through so hard times and and it was sometimes we were so desperate of looking for answers looking looking f for, for healing solution. for solutions and but when when you looked at me i like okay wow yeah and it was give it, an, give it a try when I, re <laughs> when I read your book i know this is the truth this is not just an idea or a opportunity a new opportunity i tried so many diets and lifestyle changes and therapies but i never thought okay this is the answer but when i read your book everything makes sense you gave you gave me so much relief <coughs> for no. my soul for my heart for my entire being from from my perspective mm -hmm. it was like annika felt understood yes. like like finally someone understood her and is not saying ah oh, you you're making this with your mind or or you're overreacting, you're drummering mm. and stuff like that. So finally, you had the feeling that, that you someone understood you. Yeah, and that's a great thing in our daily work when we work with clients, yeah. guiding them through their illnesses with your information. The moment when they realize that their body is not destroying itself, and they are not and doing they are something not doing yeah. wrong, <clears throat> Yeah. And that they are not um that they have not that they have not um sorry, <laughs> have to find the right word. No, you that the uh, illnesses are amazing. not their uh, their fault. Fault was the word. Then yeah. um it is like magic happens. And this is yeah. part of empowerment you're talking about. This is so important to realize it's not your fault. And you can do something against it. You know what happens is that but that was the plan. That was the plan from Spirit of Compassion. So when I was writing that book, um, you know, it was it. And, and I was taking down the information. I was writing word for word mm -hmm. what Spirit of Compassion was telling me. And I was writing down the words. And, you know, I was like, it made sense to me. Every <laughs> every sentence was it made sense. And I was like, so this is going to speak to the ones that that need the answers and spirit of compassion was like that's the plan is that mm -hmm. they see what they're really going through and that there is a way out and that it that they're i remember writing that your body doesn't attack itself and your immune system doesn't attack itself in that first book yeah i remember writing most important that. sentence for me this was so oh my gosh what <laughs> This is crazy, but in a good way. <laughs> it's, it's perfect. It's so helpful. And this was so full of com compassion for me. Part of me, a big part of me wishes that, that I, I had that book out uh, years and years earlier, yeah. like I was supposed to do. And But the, the waiting list and the millions of people waiting mm. for help, I had to help daily every day. I was helping, you know. 30 to 50 people a day and seven days a week and had the had, was uh had the 24-hour service people can call me in the middle of the night and i and i and i i was 
always, always there for everybody in that way. And, and then, and so I, but I always wanted that book to be out to the whole world. So it wasn't just about reaching me because people say, Oh, I have to get a hold of him. I have to mm-hmm. reach him. The books are there, so you don't have to reach me. Yeah, all the so information you can heal are in, in Germany because you or you yeah. can heal in Germany. You can yeah. heal in and other places around the world, and that's that's what it's for. Yeah, and absolutely, and it's so great in Germany when we went, and also in Austria and Switzerland when we went to the bookstore stores. They are all all. Your books are there, yeah. and people see them and buy them, and um, going to social media and looking for more uh, input and informations, and that's so, so great. So you are very well known in Germany right now. Well, that well, that's incredible. It truly is. It's a it's a it's a dream because yes. that's what I want. I want I want people to have that information. So when you found that book and you're reading it, and you're like, oh my, oh my God, this is truth. This is the answer. This is this is the information and ben- Benjamin and you came home and you saw her crying. <laughs> Was out on this. But were you were were you like oh no now we got all this work to do now now we <laughs> okay now we have this work to do to heal and but you guys I mean you you jumped into it yeah you absolutely just, and it's it's so nice to to have a little bit more control because when someone is telling you your body is attacking yourself you feel out of control and um when when and you gave me my my control back with your with your information that's what it's about that for sure i have to be honest healing and detoxing is not an easy way it's not like um, starting and a few days later you're feeling like a not newborn. Like taking a pill. <laughs> it's not like taking a pill. It is, is this, um, you have work to do. And, but when you have faith and trust in, in your body, then you go for it and yeah. you will heal. And that is just the most amazing thing I've ever done in my life to start this healing, healing journey and to trust, to trust you, to trust spirit, to trust myself and my body. And yeah. I want, I want everybody to have their control back over yeah. their health. And I know that when people aren't that sick and they haven't been there yet and they haven't been in the trenches where you were, mm. okay. And they only have a little bit of acne, which is no fun, or they only have maybe a little bit of eczema and it kind of comes and goes a little bit, but they're able to go and they're able to work out every day and they're able to mm. live their life and run around and get their coffee drinks and, and they're able to get off of gluten and somebody gives them advice to do this and somebody clears up a little or they feel a little bit better here and there and they're not in that place. They're not in that place. They still feel like they've got control as they play guessing games. And, <clears throat> and but when you get, when, when that shifts, and stuff starts to catch up and and you start getting sick and things that like pathogens that people don't even know about or talk about are in your system that are in the medical medium book so people can learn and you learn and all of a sudden you're going to those doctors and you're really getting appointments and you're really and you're losing you're in the fatigue and you're getting the brain fog and you're not able to do the workout in the gym for an hour and a half every day and you're not able to and you can't really think and you can't you feel so fatigued once it goes there you just you realize that no we don't have control mm-hmm. and i always tell people don't let it get to that point learn the information to where where you can heal and come back from such difficult times and struggles and but what's what's disheartening out there and what i see is there's people that play around in the whole guessing game land because they're not really sick sick. They really mm-hmm. haven't gone into the, they haven't been through hell and back or yeah. anything. They're just playing around and they're playing around. And I understand that, but it, it's sad because there's so much noise out there mm-hmm. to play around with. Yeah, and so much misinformation. Yeah. Um, and, and people don't realize this is the only information that's ever been out there to get you out of the trenches mm-hmm. was this originally and it wasn't just oh try this diet play around with keto try this go do this go do this go do this and it wasn't this get rid of processed foods get rid of get rid of gluten um try this you know it wasn't that i mean that this is this is the this is the heart of wait a minute it's way worse than that 
you know, I'm, I'm told my body's destroying itself. I can't get out of bed. I'm on mattress island. I'm on couch island. <laughs> and I, I don't have control. And, and you're, you're somebody that fought your way back. You found information. You fought your way back. And, and sure, okay, sure, the books are there. The information's there. But it takes also somebody to be like, you know, I'm, I'm, I got to, I got to do this. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm tired of this. I don't want to live like this anymore. So, yeah. so you're like, you're a hero. You need to use it. You need to use the information. It's not enough that the information is, is there. You need to read it and to reread it and to think about it and to live with it. And that, this is what, what I did. I not only read your books once, I read it, I read them quite a few times. And sometimes I reread um, some some pages because I always find another a new thing, well a new a new thing when I read uh, different pages, a new connection. And this is the magical the, so the, the, the books. books. Yes, and I think this is a magical thing about your books. I found answers for all my symptoms, and I had a list. It was so long. Oh my God. Um, just symptoms from literally from head to toe, nearly every part of my body had at least one symptom. And um, I found answers for every single symptom in your book and the connection between them. And everything makes sense. And this was so, wow, absolutely mind-blowing. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's important to have answers to all the different symptoms too. Like, why is the symptom there? What's causing the symptom? Because that's not anywhere else. And yes. it's just not there. Research and science doesn't have it for anyone. They just don't have any answers. It's your genes are bad or your body's destroying itself. Or if you go in kind of the new age area of it all, like <clears throat> you're not spiritually connected, um, you're, you're manifesting it wrong. And that's why, that's why you're sick. We can't accept that. That's not acceptable. It's not supposed to be okay to be the new normal for every single person to have a symptom or five symptoms. Your case, like 15 symptoms, mm-hmm. maybe even more. And it's not, it's not right to have to live like that. And so, look, you know, what I love is I love that, that, that you've, you've come this far, Okay. And I love that you're doing the work you're doing. And I love all of that. And I love how you're, you know, you're that, that spiritual power in a way that is the guide for people. And I see Mm -hmm. it that way. It's like, look, if I was ever sick, if I was ever sick, if I was ever down and out, if I was ever struggling, if I was just if I was stuck in that place of, of not having control and you were like, Anthony, there, there, there are answers mm-hmm. and you put your hand out. I, I would just be like, yeah, just <laughs> Annika, just get me out of this. And <laughs> that's what you're so doing much. for people out there. Yeah, I hope so and that, I do, that I can do this because it's so, it's so, it's an important work and, um, yeah, so thank you very much. And what I realized is when you live this way with, with a clean diet, with a lot of fruits and veggies, and um, when you're detoxing, your spiritual um, your spirituality, i sorry for the pronouncing, I hope you guys understand me, um, is, is clear, clearer. So you have a better contact to spirituality. I hope you understand what I want well, to say. It's funny. <laughs> it, it, it's funny. People ask me all the time, you'd be like, hey, are you, I know you got all these books and everything, but are you spiritual? And I'm like, um, okay, I'm hearing a voice from up here <laughs> <laughs> giving me advanced medical information yeah. and also other information. I'm writing it down in here. I don't know if I'm spiritual. I don't know what you would call it. What do you mean? Because people say, well, yeah, are you really spiritual though? And well, I'm getting the information from up here. <laughs> I don't know if that accounts for being spiritual. I think <laughs> but, it counts. But it's definitely. funny. But it's funny. I get asked that because I'm not doing the spiritual talk that's maybe trending yeah, okay. so much. 
you know, where everybody's doing the spiritual vibe or the spiritual talk that's trending so much. And I'm not like, I'm not, I'm always talking about illness and sickness and people struggling. And, and because I feel that that's the most spiritual place you could ever go is someone's struggle there because you lose your spirit when you're yes. sick. Right. So I don't know anything more spiritual than that where you're sick, you're not feeling good, you're, you're, there's a part of you you're losing, you're feeling like you're losing, you, lose, you get yeah. the hopelessness for so many people going through it, your spirit's breaking down. I've had people come to me over the years when they get a chance to talk to me all these years ago when they would get a chance to talk to me and they'd be like, my spirit's broken. Yeah, mm-hmm. That's totally what they would say, my spirit is I mean. broken. And so I don't think there's anything more spiritual than getting somebody's life back because it's not about a spiritual mumbo jumbo or still like, it's not like spiritual trending words or anything. It's about when you get your life back, mm-hmm. there's nothing more spiritually powerful than that. Yes, absolutely. Because we all have souls. We all, we, we, we're, we're spiritual beings here. Doesn't matter how we kind of cookie cut it or how we dress it up or how we gloss it up or what, what's trending or how we talk. It's about we're spiritual. We're spiritual beings, and when we're losing our lives, and we're in that dark place, and we're in that dark hopelessness, and we're suffering, and we're struggling, and our spirits are broken, and I mean, I people tell me that over mm-hmm. the years, this is what it feels like, and you come back from that, that's spiritual empowerment, that's, that's what that is, and, you know, and, and I, I have had people come back from from the depths of of despair from healing like with you mm-hmm. and from from being sick and and you become like spiritually renewed do you feel like yeah, right. do you feel it's that to a way too like it's almost yeah. like i get a new chance yeah absolutely it's just something about that having yeah. that new chance the new chance and um you wrote it so so wonderful in one of your books you said um that we have a, a part of our soul soul upwards in the universe behind the stars and um, that even if we are so so broken and feel so emotional tired and lost that we can connect with this part yeah. of our soul and when i read that i stood outside um looking to the stars and cried <laughs> again <laughs> <laughs> and it, um, it is so wonderful yes. to know that that we have the the heal part of our soul to connect with. Yeah, it gets me choked up. And because I remember when Spirit of Compassion told me that, and so I put it in the book. Mm. And and I remember when Spirit of Compassion told me that long before I even put it in, in the book, um, because I would tell people, I would say, you if, if you feel you're in that place right now, people would come to me so sick. And I'd say, look, I just want you to look at the stars. Mm. And I want you to know that there's a, there's a part of your soul that stays protected up there in those stars, mm. behind those stars. And there's a part of you that stays protected. It's there for a reason because we get broken down here. We go through betrayal. We go through mm. trust breakage. We go, when, when someone breaks your trust, when someone stabs you in the back, when somebody betrays you, when someone hurts you, when someone, it, we go through so much different kind of letdowns here from emotional upsets and breakups and all kinds of things that we have relationship people that people go through problems and all these things could just feel like it wrecks you there's a part of your soul that stays untouched and free from all of that way up spirit of compassion told me and you just have to look up you have to look up behind those stars and know it's there for you and connect with it. And that's going to give you that extra power to start that battery power in your soul and in your spirit to start bringing you back. Yeah, it does. It's so it's powerful. While you're working on your healing I, process. I remember, and this was a long time before um, we read your books, was when I was back in New Zealand and I had this bad, bad injury and I almost died with, with um, bleeding brain and um oh and, and um during this time before that happened one of my greatest fears was always um death not dying but death and then i, I had this experience and i almost died and um um the, the the doctors in germany couldn't understand how i survived and, <laughs> and then, <laughs> it was so funny 
<laughs> actually not <laughs> but uh, and and but but what happened was like that it was like i was staying there in front of the door knocking and and someone said no not soon it's not your time and this really changed my thinking about wow and it was amazing and this was mm. was before we read your books and then your books came and it was again like wow yes that's right what what you experienced is is real yeah so that's incredible <clears throat> that's a powerful story I mean, <laughs> that, that's mind blowing. Actually, I want to make it short. It's a long story, but I yeah. don't want to. No, no, it's it's <laughs> yeah, going to near death and doctors wondering if you're going to make it. That's exactly. I, you know, um, what I wanted to ask you guys, mm -hmm. like your foods and supplements, and you're doing and, and and things like that. So, what are you doing for the foods? I mean, I have a heavy metal detox yeah. movie, of course, always in front of me. So, yeah, and we all have celery juice, of course. Celery juice is so important for us because when we started with the celery juice, it was um, three years ago. Um, the first thing we realized was that Benjamin <laughs> get rid of his exit reflux. So from the celery juice. From yes. celery yeah. juice. Only yeah. celery juice. This was the first um, change in our diet, the celery juice. And um, yeah. he had bad exit reflux for his entire life, since oh, yeah. child, oh, my, my, childhood. My whole life. And in, as a child, you thought it is quite normal to have such burning in your throat, right? Yeah. It was your normal I, day. I, I think I, I told my parents when I was 16 or so. And but I experienced. I think the first time I remembered was with five, and mm -hmm. then they said, "Okay, we need to do something. We need to do a gastro." And then they looked and said, "They have this hernia." And mm -hmm. is it the right word? I'm yeah. not sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, and I took pills so long, and and I, I always had the feeling this is not right. It's mm -hmm. not right. And um, even when I was studying. Um, nursing I, it was like oh my god i can't take these pills anymore because what am i what am i doing i'm it's destroying my whole guts with these pills mm -hmm. and i didn't want to do it anymore and finally it was amazing you know mm -hmm. your whole life spending with having reflux or um knowing that you're doing something bad to your body and this was kind of a big relief with the celery juice and well how, how long did you do the celery juice before it started easing up <clears throat> Just a few weeks, I think. That was yeah. so fast, actually. It was very fast. So Incredible. we changed a little bit more. We cut off the no food. So everything that feed viruses and bacteria, we cut off. So eggs and, yeah. and diary and gluten. and yeah. Because I thought, okay, there are these bugs, viruses and bacteria, yeah. and they are making me sick. And I don't want to feed them one day longer. So this was my decision, and um, so I cut off the no foods. Well, you know, the people say, well, how can eggs be bad for you? Everybody's still being told to eat <laughs> eggs. They're still like, you know, eat eggs. And women are being told every day. Young mm. women just eat eggs. Make sure you get your protein. Make sure you get your healthy, mm. <laughs> your healthy eggs in you and all this stuff. And it's really sad because eggs actually feed everything that makes us sick. The reason why we're sick is these pathogens. And you know, so I, what I did with, with the new Cleanse the Heal book coming out. Yeah, I'm so excited about it. <laughs> I, I really pushed Spirit of Compassion really hard with the new Cleanse the Heal book. So this is the, this is actually the, this isn't the book, it's, the, well, this is mine, the, my <laughs> copy, which is the manuscript I'm editing <laughs> here. This is, and but it's, it's on Amazon if you wanna find it. Um, Cleanse the Heal, it's coming out yeah. soon. But anyway, so what I did was I really pushed Spirit of Compassion hard. I said, I want all the information you can give me on why eggs are hurting us mm -hmm. and why we need to stay away from them. Because, you know, sure, you told me it feeds pathogens. I want all of this information so people can be armed and they can be protected and they can have that shield of protection to know that if they're dealing with brain fog and yeah. you know, tingles and numbness, fibromyalgia, Hashimoto's, mm -hmm. eczema psoriasis, whatever it is that you don't want to do eggs. Um, so it's really critical that you don't do eggs. And so Spirit gave me so much information about eggs and why we shouldn't be eating them. And it, I love eggs. It's not even like, 
It's not even like I hate them or anything like that. I don't. <laughs> and people people are like, wait a minute, you must have a belief system. You just don't like them or something. No, that's not it. Yeah. They taste really, really good. Yeah, absolutely. But, but they feed <laughs> pet, pet, uh, bacteria and viruses. And that's uh, the whole problem. And yeah. it's a man-made thing, right? Because we're, we're used uh, eggs. In, yeah, in, in, they used them in the labs. Uh, yeah, that's what, right. that's what that's, that's the problem. That's what research and science, that's what the pharmaceutical companies did. They took eggs a survival food mm-hmm. that kept people alive in so many situations around the world because they were an, an important food. And they took that food and they used it as a fuel source right. for pathogens they raised in the lab back 80 years ago, 90 years ago, right. like 80 years, like 70, 80 years ago, all in that realm. And and they still, they still use them and no one knows about it. They don't talk about it and no one gets that information. So right. what happens is when you have the Epstein-Barr causing your neurological fatigue, your aches and pains, your eczema, your psoriasis, your Hashimoto's, your thyroid problems, your, your fibromyalgia, your, your all these different things are the shingles virus causing your trigeminal neuralgia and your neuropathy, all these different things that people are dealing with every day. And you eat eggs, you're just feeding that bug, you're feeding that Epstein-Barr, you're feeding that shingles virus, and it's going to town. It's, it's eating, it's, it's staying strong, and you stay sick. And, you know, it's amazing how, you know, the, uh, people are so emotionally connected to eggs, and I totally yes, understand. I so did you five did you to eat? ten eggs a five, day that's why I, was, <laughs> I read your books. I had a feeling so you I... Ate just eggs and meat and dairy products. That's, that, this yeah. was my diet because yeah, eggs and bacon. Yeah. Eggs and bacon. And doctors told me you have to stay away from fruit. So the fruit fear was going around, and yeah. this was the worst thing I think about my diet. No fruit, no a lot of fat, and no um, a very rare um, red veggies. Just meat, eggs. And milk. And yeah. It was like it worked for for about I guess when we were on this um, this diet like um, some months and then you totally then my collapsed. whole system collapsed. Yeah. Well, the reason why the, what happens is when you go off of processed foods mm. and and you just go on say eggs, meat, dairy, you're going to feel a little better. A little, yeah. You are yeah. because you're off of processed foods. It's just so to so say somebody wasn't as sick as you. And they just had a little bit of eczema, a little bit of brain fog mm-hmm. once in a while. Maybe maybe they just didn't feel like they had that much energy or they had some acne. Mm-hmm. And they're then then they're they're told stay off of processed foods, but make sure you keep your eggs in there. As soon as they get off the processed foods, they're gonna start feeling better and they think they found the holy grail. They think that, oh wait a minute, I can still have some eggs, still have some of this, still have some salmon, still have You know, lots of nuts and seeds still have, I mean, nuts and seeds are healthy, but having a lot of them is not really a good idea. You can still have all these different high fat foods, or you can still have some cheese, healthy cheese, some yogurt, some, you can still have these things. Mm. And then what happens is what they don't realize though, is that they'll get a little bit better. They'll start feeling a little bit better. Mm. And then all of a sudden, you know, things can take a turn down the road or they'll just stay in that guessing game area where they can get away right. with just eating the trendy diet, keeping eggs in. But when you're somebody that really ha- – and it could get you in trouble, though, down the road. You start getting a little older, and then it hits, and you start getting all your heart palpitations, and you can't you know, all of a sudden live your life, and you get all these other things. But with you, you were really at this place where – you had a lot of a lot of stuff going on, like millions of people do. Yeah, millions right. of women do. They have all these symptoms, okay? Yeah, and right. and you you went off the processed food and you just you kept your diet really clean like doctors wanted. You kept like the eggs, mm. you kept the bacon in there, you kept right, and you noticed a difference. You were feeling a little bit better. Yeah, and that's what happens when everybody goes on their keto diet, their paleo right. diet, and their vegan you think you produce a diet. lot of adrenaline when you eat such, uh, such yeah. high-fat diets. Yeah. You produce so much adrenaline. And this is why you feel a little bit better, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. And this was the first step for me, cutting out the no foods, drinking celery juice. And the heavy metal detox smoothie was was very important because because I, I had so, so my, many um, heavy metals in my body floating around. Um, they play a huge part in um, with brain fog. And so I started very slowly with the heavy metal detox smoothie uh, on a daily basis. Mm. And um, yeah, we still drink it every day. Mm. 
with full amounts of every um, ingredient. And I think that's the most important part. Yeah, you, so, just, you started and I just followed. Yeah. And what we experienced was that I could handle more than you could. Yeah, you could. For example, with the celery juice as well as the heavy, heavy metal yeah. detox smoothie. And I just followed. And I had my, on to be honest, my up and downs <laughs> quite a few times, actually. Because yeah. I, I wasn't coming from this bad situation as Annika was. So... And this is the funny thing about your mind, because because I just experienced that I felt better quite fast, and so and then this this little man in my head was like, oh yeah, now you can try it again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and now you can go back to your old mm -hmm. behavior. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I really needed some some. Extra rounds. Extra rounds. <laughs> <laughs> More celery juice. More celery juice. More the heavy metal detox yeah. smoothie. Well, and um, you ask about supplements. So I take a lot, to be honest. Um, I took a lot and I take a lot. And um, my, my favorite supplement is lemon balm. Because lemon balm always grounded me on an emotional level. Yeah. And it helps my nervous system. Because yeah. when you have a problem... So this is just my opinion, but when you have a problem with your nervous system for such a long, uh, long period of time, then this is nothing that changes overnight. So I'm three years on this journey right now with your information, and I healed a lot. So I never thought three years ago that I will ever reach such a healthy state for mm -hmm. for me and my body well, you know what's amazing is you guys do just the medical medium information you don't mix right. it up you're not right. adding in the apple cider vinegar you're not you're not no. you're not adding in the collagen you're not adding in all these other things you're not mixing it up where where including changing up foods and doing this where you're getting all this uh misinformation on the internet you guys are sticking with this information here that the, the information that's swamping the internet that's both good and bad mm -hmm. is is a compilation of just guessing games that are man-made. And I always try to tell people this because someone will say to me, why do I want medical medium information? Why would I want your information? Because it's not man-made. It's not man-made. Yeah, right. And, and that means it's not contaminated with guessing games or interest money behind it or investors behind it or trendsetters behind it that have investment investors or whatever it is or research and science where there's a thumb on the scale so no one gets fired um in the in the in the, i've had scientists tell me you don't want if you want to keep your job you better pr produce a result mm -hmm. whether you like it or not one <laughs> whether you see something bad you don't talk about what you see bad you just Scientists, they just got to talk about the one little thing that might have been positive because you don't want to never work again in the science field. I've, I've heard that from so many different scientists. It's like yeah. the, the scientists have they have this this common saying, which do you want to work again or do you never want to work again? Mm. Yeah. And so so, well, this isn't man made information. Yeah, and it, the information works. So when I started with your information and to, uh, to change my diet and so and my lifestyle, um, at the time I got my breast implants removed. I had breast implants for eight years of my life. And you have a radio show about breast implant illness. And breast implant illness is, is a real thing. It's not the the cause of of um, chronic illness but it's a, a huge trigger because you have yeah. those implants in your body and they are full of heavy metals and other toxic stuff and you wearing it under your skin and it's always there and it's a big trigger and a great place for bacteria to live in and um, so i've got the breast implants removed and um I recovered so, so quick mm. with your diet um, information from the surgery. It was a big surgery because the implants were everywhere in my body, literally, and connected to my bones. Um, so this was a big surgery, and I recovered so, so quick with yeah. celery juice, with mangoes. They were played a huge so, part yeah, in my healing. You were like, so, like eating yeah, mangoes like all the time, and... 
And right. this was so, this, this was like... It was hey, that was fruit. Yeah. That was fruit. Fruit's <laughs> oh supposed God. to be bad for us. Oh my God, this is, this is terrible. You know, it, it, people have to understand that s- some people, like many women, can have the breast implants yeah. and not experience any problems because in that moment, they don't have an Epstein-Barr that's actually basically out of the running, out of the gate, mm-hmm. and, and running around through the body, causing trouble. They don't have a shingles. They don't have multiple Epstein bars. They don't have an HHV6. They don't have a cytomegalovirus. They don't have a simplex one or two, and or they don't have a really bad uh, a bad mix of them all. You know what happens is that is that but you can have the breast implants and then they're creating toxins. Right. They're creating toxins. They're discharging toxins, and there's nothing feeding on those toxins. Until you end up picking up your first Epstein bar in a relationship, or you're picking up the first Epstein bar in a restaurant because a chef cut their finger, mm-hmm. <clears throat> or you pick up your first Epstein bar sharing some glasses because someone happened to be really viral in that moment, and you're at a party and you're sharing bottles or glasses, and you get your first EBV, and you're at now your your breast implants they become a trigger right. because they're just like having saying toxic heavy metals in your body. It's just like having something else in your body. And you know, all the toxins I talk about in Cleanse to Heal, which I cover toxins like no one's ever known about what's inside our body, um, all the way to, to just luggage when in the airport and how you have to throw away your, your carry-ons after you've gone through the airports for a few trips because the amount of radiation... <clears throat> that's in the carry-on and you don't want that near your child. You don't want that, you know, sitting by your bed at night. You don't want that. You want to throw away your carry-ons eventually. So I tell people don't get real expensive carry-ons because you're going to need to toss it after a couple of trip, few trips. But, Good to know. <laughs> yeah. Because of that amount of radiation. But the point is, is that all these toxins we're dealing with are triggers and breast implants. It's just, it's like that. It's one of those triggers. It's yeah, and it was a big trigger for It's me. a big trigger yeah, for you. Absolutely. And I was so happy to get rid of them. And um, the surgery was was big. I already said that. And I recovered so fast. A year before that, in 2016, I had uh, appendicitis and a surgery as well. And um, I need five months to recover from that surgery. Yeah, it took ages. It took me so long. It was it's before terrible. my... my uh, breast um, surgery so the uh, uh, surgery for the appendix was half a year before and I had so many trouble to to recover from that because I've got antibiotics uh, antibiotics um, after surgery and all streptococcus in my body said hooray let's have a party in this girl (laughs) so streptococcus is a is a big big um part and a huge um yeah but doctors doctors don't know what's a streptococcus they don't know they don't know they don't know that that's they know that yeah that that you've learned that from the medical information because that's the whole thing and and the strep groups are what causes our our appendix to 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 get inflamed for so long it's those strep groups and you know from sinuses to tonsils to to um to sore throats, to mysterious, mysterious sore throats, to um, uh, to bloating, bloating, <laughs> acid big... reflux. No. Strep is behind acne. Acne, right. acne. I strep is so behind man, I, so I still full of acne after surgery. It's amazing, you know. Every time, every time a friend will be like, you know, I was watching a YouTube or I was I was on social media, and there's another person talking about their acne and how. You know, and they don't have a, a single clue. Their acne is caused by streptococcus, yeah. and they're just getting information from either uh, some type of practitioner or their doctor or a health coach, and they're just telling them, "Oh, it's your hormones," or "Oh, oh, use this cream," yeah. or "or change this food," but not know why it could help or not help or might help mm-hmm. but might not, and. Everybody's still running around, and you see it's just, you know, no matter how many years I've been putting out the truth that cystic acne and acne problems are streptococcus, mm-hmm. and and how you have to get rid of that strep to really get rid of that. No matter yeah. how many years I put that out, you still see it every day. I have people tell me, I still people tell me, like, no, there's still a new person on YouTube now. Oh, another 10 more people saying it's yeah. hormones or something it's hormones else. Hormones or something. So may and I ask you a question about streptococcus? Is it 
is it about what is about beans and lentils when it comes to streptococcus? Well, what it is, what it is, is 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 beans, lentils. They don't feed viruses and pathogens. So beans and grains don't feed those those kinds of beans, like lentils and and aduki beans, black beans, chickpeas, garbanzo beans. They, they don't feed bugs, um, and and grains like millet. Okay, mm -hmm. and even oats don't feed bugs, um, but but they still, if you're eating too much of it, mm -hmm. they don't offer oh, enough nutrition. So you're taking up so much space because mm -hmm. they don't offer that much nutrition. I mean, compared to foods you could be eating, and that's one thing right there. It's yeah, really okay. important to know. But but gluten-based grains are the ones that feed yeah. viruses. They feed pathogens and all that. It's just that when you're eating too many grains, too much rice. You're, you're taking up a lot of space for what you can, you know, and I talk about it all in Cleanse the Heal, too, no, all about that, like all about beans and grains and stuff. And so, but... And the mucus, um, I, I read that um, beans and lentils form mucus in our body. Yeah. And this, that this could be a problem within some people. Because they're not, they're not easily digestible ah, okay. because everybody's digestions are just, they're shot. Everybody's... Mm -hmm. Hydrochloric acid, stomach glands aren't producing the HCL. Their digestion is weakened. Their livers, their livers are weakened. So when you're putting, it, you know, you're putting in a lot of beans and a lot of mm. grains, they're they're little, they're harder to break down. They're harder to digest. So it's not that they're feeding pathogens. It's just they're really hard to digest. So you want to get your HCL, your HCL better. Yes. You want your celery juice. <laughs> you want to get your diet strong. Then you can bring in. Could bring in a few things like that, okay. you know. You can bring, you know. So yeah, but I, I talk all about that and cleanse the heel. You are looking forward to live to read it. <laughs> <laughs> but I am, I am blown away that I have you guys here. Thank you and so much. This has been here. an incredible, incredible time. Um, and um, and I just want to say I'm honored. Um, no, we you, too. <laughs> you're helping so many that are watching. We so <laughs> we're trying our best. I always say that too. I'm always, I hope I'm, <laughs> I hope I'm helping. Yeah, we just hope to help. Yeah. It's, it's so important. <laughs> And no, you guys are. Thank you guys you very are. Much. Um, so, uh, okay. I guess we're going to be, uh, we're going to be signing off. This was the first episode of the second season, YouTube Live. Uh, Annika, Benjamin, Beast. And yeah. <laughs> we're here. So... Just want to say bless your heart. Everybody take care. Know that I love you much.